My talk today is going to focus on my belief that global citizenship is a critical 21st century skill. Yet, the topic of global understanding and global awareness is nearly absent from the National Dialogue on Education. I've spent the last 10 years of my life learning what I believe keeps people from engaging in thoughtful global dialogue, and I've seen firsthand the mistakes we make on a global scale when we don't engage in cross-cultural conversations. I didn't always believe this, however. I grew up here. Fonda in upstate New York, about four hours outside of New York City. It's rural, it's quiet. At the time of my childhood, Fonda had a population of about 800 people, and it was the kind of place where you knew all of your neighbors and more or less everyone in town. Most of our newspapers and television news focused on things that happened within a 50-mile radius of our town. Looking back on my childhood, I can only recall a few international stories that received significant media attention. At age 23, I moved to New York City, and I found even being here, in the crossroads of the world, the world beyond New York can be summed up to 90 seconds every hour. A sizable portion of the population still tends to think about things very locally. International stories usually only get a few minutes of our attention. Now, despite having moved to New York City, I really hadn't experienced much of the world. Traveling abroad was not something I had aspired to do as a child, nor was it something that was encouraged when I was in school. At age 24, in the year 2000, you can see I'm much older now, I applied for my first passport. My first trips out of the country were for work, and these were very compartmentalized experiences. I would visit a foreign country, come back to New York City without understanding anything about what it meant to be from a place other than my own. I visited about half a, dozen, uh, half a dozen countries in my first three years of foreign travel, and every experience was pretty much the same. Then I saw a South African play. This was in the year 2004. Um, this is Dr. John Connie. He's the author of the play. It was called Nothing But the Truth, and I had just started ProjectExplorer.org, a production company, as you know, to, start, uh, to produce globally focused educational videos for students. When I walked into the theater, I knew almost nothing about the history of South Africa. I knew almost nothing about apartheid and I knew absolutely nothing about truth and reconciliation. During this play, I was confronted with an entirely new history. How could something as monumental as South Africa's first free elections gone on when I was a student at university, and yet I knew nothing about it? Now, the beauty of theater in general, and this play in particular, is the ability to open your mind and touch your heart through storytelling. I walked out of the theater with my next educational series decided on. I would go to South Africa. As production got closer, I started to become uneasy. Would people be willing to tell me about their country, to talk to me about their country, if I didn't have an in-depth understanding of their history and their everyday concerns? But in South Africa, people were surprisingly open and eager to share their stories. People welcomed me into their homes, into their businesses. I heard stories from some of the most fascinating people on the planet. This had never happened to me as a tourist. And it was through these stories that I started to see what it meant for South Africans to live there what consumes their day to day, and the challenges they face. And I began to focus less on our differences and more of what we share as human beings. But the most enlightening experience was when I visited two schools. I found that adults are often afraid of looking foolish or uninformed. Most kids outside of the academic setting of the classroom don't have that filter and tend to ask what's ever on their minds. These students asked me everything um, from celebrities' lives to issues of race and violence in America. Just as many Americans have a preconceived notion of a poverty-stricken and war-torn African continent, students I met in South Africa viewed America through the lens of limited um, media, Hollywood blockbusters, and pop culture. So I took a, a cue from these young kids, and I started to ask all kinds of questions of the people I met. And in doing so, started to engage in conversation on big topics. Everyone tells you, don't discuss politics or religion, but I found the opposite. When I was abroad, as long as it came from a point of learning, Almost no topic was off limits. And because I was open to having these conversations, I was able to show an authentic reflection of life in South Africa in my film series. Rather than making films about what I thought was important, I asked simple questions like, what are you most proud of as a South African? What are the challenges you face? What should the rest of the world know about you and your country? And the answers to these questions helped me realize that most of our concerns are global in nature. And what happens far away directly affects us economically, politically, and personally. So I took this to, uh, concept to the Middle East, where few visitors ask questions about um, religion or gender equality. And again, by asking simple questions, I was able to gain a better understanding of women's roles in Jordanian society and Islam. 
And I got to take these messages back to students in America via my film series. Now, through sharing my travel experiences with students in American schools, the lack of importance placed on global education became very clear. In most cases, primary and secondary schools sum up global education in international cuisine and world holidays. Last year, I had the chance to film at a hospital in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, and this is where the critical importance of global understanding, global communication really hit home for me. Following the 2010 earthquake, some surgeons were estimating about 200,000 Haitians would need amput uh, amputations. And in Haiti, losing a limb carries a social stigma. International aid organizations quickly sent donated prosthetics, and some of the first to arrive were in those matching skin tones of white people. I tried to explain this to my white friends. I asked them to consider the nearly unimaginable trauma of losing a limb in a society that doesn't view an amputee as a whole person. Now imagine as a white person being outfitted with a black skin tone hand or foot. This is what can happen when we impose our viewpoints. This example is not unique to Haiti. We can all recall humanitarian campaigns or foreign actions that have failed for similar reasons of not engaging across cultures. Solutions to our toughest challenges need to be developed together, not imposed. Now, having traveled to nearly 50 countries and having worked with 100 people, uh, hundreds of people around the world, it's my belief we need to ask more questions. We need more dialogue, especially cross-cultural conversation. And this dialogue must begin in the classroom. Project Explorer is one of the first tools to encourage dialogue across cultures for young people on a global scale. I've watched one of our three, minutes, uh, three minute videos draw in students who typically sit quiet in a classroom and generate an hour's worth of conversation. Inquisitive dialogue is a skill everyone is born with. Young children are constantly asking questions to better understand their world. But these questions soon after they enter, enter school often stop when they learn the value placed on a right answer. Now, some of the new tools and resources that are getting a lot of attention focus purely on delivery, learning by rote, and lecture. This innovation in technology isn't enough. We need to do better. A crucial part of learning is adapting a fact to your own viewpoint. That requires questioning. That requires encouraging the natural curiosity that all students have. If we aren't preparing our students to be globally aware, we're doing them a massive disservice, and I'm not alone in thinking this. So Project Explore recently commissioned a nationwide survey of parents, teachers, and educators. And while we asked them hundreds of questions about the current education and global education, these are, the, these are the answers I found to be most interesting. Is it more important today than ever before for students about, to know about other countries and cultures? 80% of teachers said yes. 82% of hiring managers said yes. The second question that uh, interested me, will students who understand other countries and cultures be more successful than those who don't? 75% of respondents said yes. Now despite these numbers, only 30% of the educators participating in the survey said that they regularly incorporate materials about other countries and cultures into their lesson plans. This is for a variety of reasons, but preparing students to be effective members of society means discussing global issues past and present and showing the parallels between a student's world and the broader world around them. The sooner we teach this, the more likely they will become global citizens in an increasingly global society. Now to me, being a global citizen means, means celebrating our common humanity while respecting the different path another culture or, or group may take. And you really can't do either of those if you don't make an effort to learn what those commonalities are. My work in the global education movement as a whole have drawn criticism from those who feel global education is anti-American. Some even fight against the idea that we are global citizens, claiming to only be citizens of the nation under which they live. Now, of course, in a very narrow way, this is true. We don't all get passports from the United Nations. But unlike being the citizen of a nation, being a global citizen gives us all the same rights and obligations at birth. You can't opt out of humanity. So why are we as a nation choosing to ignore the vital importance of global citizenship and interconnectedness? What does it mean to me to be a good global citizen? Uh, I would say for myself, it's challenging myself to be aware of what's going on outside of my normal boundaries. You know, uh, to be aware of what's happening with my neighbor. And not necessarily my neighbor who lives next to me in California, but my neighbor in terms of neighbors in other states, neighbors in other countries, uh, neighbors in other continents. Just keep, to, to, just trying to every day be aware of something that's going on outside of my normal way of life. I think uh, being a good global citizen um, means waking up to the fact that we are all part of a much larger process, an evolving process, 
and that those of us that are privileged enough even to be having this conversation or watching this now are actually in a position to move that process forward. And a big part of that is actually realizing the fact that we are interconnected. The world is getting flatter and smaller every single day. And we have much more in common with people living in a tiny little village in northern China than either they realize or we realize. A lot of issues that we're all dealing with today in America are global issues. Um, and we're all connected with the internet, with Facebook, with everything. I think it's very important today with the information that we can have about what's going on in the world uh, to be active to make our world a better world. Communicate. Ask questions. Who are you? Where are you from? What do you value? What do you think we could do better? And answer those same questions to yourself and to the people that you meet. Communicate, listen, answer the questions, keep asking, keep answering, communicate. One of the most important tasks of an educator is to foster the next generation of global citizens. A generation that is better prepared to communicate in our rapidly shrinking world. And of course, with connected classrooms, this is easier than ever before. The world can't afford to wait. We don't need more research. We don't need more studies. We know that our world is becoming more globally connected and that technology is erasing geographic borders. We need more educators who will encourage curiosity and thoughtful dialogue by incorporating global issues into their lesson plans. We need those who will challenge prejudices and be open to provocative questions. Our students need this from us because global awareness is a critical 21st century skill that all students will need in order to succeed. And because without us, they're unlikely to learn this skill anywhere else. Thank you.